Welcome to Before the Bat, the Gotham Podcast, your guide to the TV show Gotham and all things Batman. And I am Phil. With me is Tyler and Solo. Yeah. Say hi, Solo. Kelly and Ellie. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Luca asleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, let's get into it. Well, what did everybody think of this week? Uh, yeah, it, you know. Uh, my favorite line of this week was Phil's tweet, actually, about how Bruce must be a werewolf, and he keeps falling prey to Silver. I think it's interesting that Silver is pretty much evil. Yeah, or brainwashed. Um, and that's a departure. She's hypnotizing. So, uh, Cat like is actually... Little... Yeah. I was like, Cat's like Bruce's only real friend, and he's rejecting her, and then she'll go all emo and be like, fine, whatever, Bruce, and she'll just leave, so Bruce won't have anybody on his side looking out for him. Like exactly. You know? <laughs> Galavan's gonna try to get Bruce's company. Um, I was almost hoping that... I like that Jim figured it out, and we'll piece it together. Um, yeah, too I, little, too late. <laughs> yes. I like that. I really like the whole, like, Oswald at the end, like, just... I was almost going to, like, dude, what if they killed Gallagher? That's what I was thinking. I was like, what if Oswald just shot him right here and killed him? Like, how cool would that be? Just a twist. Like, or if they killed Tabitha. Like, but no, Tabitha killed the other... Jim's task force is disappearing, okay? Does he even have anybody left on his task force? I know, and he got taken out by high heels. I think he has... I think he he just has the one girl left on his task force. She she survives Survivor Island. Uh, I think that's the only person left on his task force because everyone else keeps getting killed. Yeah, well, you know what sums up my week? I'm a couple pot. No! And that exactly, and that's the perfect intro for Daddy Cobblepot. <laughs> Cobblepot and Cobblepot. Mm-hmm. I felt sorry for her, like, and then her whole death scene was great. Like their interaction, like. <laughs> Butch, like I wondered if it was a setup with Butch and everything. And I wonder if Butch was gonna die when they had that shootout with Zaz. Yeah. Why does Zaz need a whole like squad? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, why can't Zaz just do it on his own? He's BA. Yeah, maybe he just wanted to send a big loud message. I guess. Cause, like he's like outside with all these other people. I'm like, wouldn't Zaz just go in there and just take care of himself? We've seen him What's do that. I like Voldemort. Why did Voldemort have a whole army of people? <laughs> he reminds um, me very much of Zaz. Yeah, Zaz was like, <laughs> like if they made a Harry Potter TV show, just cast him as Voldemort. Yeah. yeah. Like when you need a new Voldemort, just get Zaz. And I love how Jim and Bullock uh, handcuff uh, Bullock, but they handcuff the uh, fake hand. <laughs> he like that's new. <laughs> Because that was one thing I didn't realize. I was like, I wonder what he had, because I was like, don't they realize he doesn't have a hand? <sighs> oh, I mean, it was, yeah, I know. it was a good episode. I mean, I'm I'm liking, I'm liking Jim, you know, and I'm liking uh, development. I feel like Bullock's kind of been on the back burner for a little while. Yeah, they're finally bringing him back up, you know. Um, not really any Michael Chiklis going on. A little bit, just to get him given a speech or two, but nothing. But I realized what the thing about this show is, okay? When I watch the Bruce and Alfred stuff, and like Cat, I really like it. When I watch the Jim and the G- GCPD stuff, I really like it. But it's when those two cross over that I'm not sold as much. It's almost like it's two different shows. Yeah. I almost wish they would get, like, they would Berlanti this show and be like, all right, we're just going to start using these Bruce and Alfred, Selena stuff. They're flashbacks. Boom. <laughs> They're flashbacks. Huh? And we're going to cast somebody as Bruce Wayne now. And he's going to be like 20 years old. And we'll use young Bruce as flashback tool. Because I think I would appreciate that more. Because it just, it just gets more and more complicated with everyone else already being like these adults. And then Bruce is this, you know, young child. Well, yeah, that's what, that's the thing. They need, they need a mass vigilante already. We have all these villains. We need some, we need a hero who isn't a cop. We, we need that. Somebody who can, who can inspire Bruce. Exactly. We know who we need. We just need Bruce to be like, I'm 12, whatever. I'll do it. I'll be bad boy. 
what we need is a singularity that opens up over Gotham and Bruce from the future drops in and trains his younger self to be a better Batman. Singularity? They can't even get iPhones or flat screen TVs. <laughs> yeah, because it's in the past. That's why they need, you know, time travel. Yeah. How cool would that be? Batman comes from the future to train himself as a child to be a better Batman. <laughs> okay. He's the only Sounds Batman like very, can train Batman. Very Lego dimensions there. He's the Batman of Earth too. There you go. Ooh, there we go, because then we get a really sweet Thomas Wayne. <laughs> But I can't believe no one hit on the uh, the other big story this week. Eddie. I'm about to say, that's the biggest story. That's why I was saving it for last. Okay. I love how they're playing him as just the, the two personalities just warring. It's fantastic. Well, I mean, that's over now. Yeah. I mean, they kind of merged. They kind but of merged him at the himself. end, which I thought was... Yeah, and he didn't remember hiding her body. Yeah. In the morgue. That was pretty amazing. He hid the body in the morgue. Where you would hide a dead yeah, body. Yeah, because he's a total thrill seeker. He wanted that adrenaline rush of maybe somebody finding her. I was like, is he going to kill Lee? And like when she yeah. like caught him, I was like, is he going to kill Lee? I don't, I don't know. I don't put anything past him. The only person I know who's that, not going to die is Bruce and Alfred and Jim. Everyone else is expendable. The hand in the vending machine. How creepy was that? Very. I know. Then it got stuck. Yeah, that was perfect. I was like, here, let me give you a hand with that. And how weird was it when he was looking for clues and he went to the vending machine, they were playing that music? (laughs) Were they really playing that music, though? I know, it wasn't even sad, but it wasn't even, like, sad music. You know what would have been sweeter, instead of having him merge his personalities, is if all of a sudden they start trying to capture this villain that's leaving these clues and these riddles, and basically... Uh, Enigma is trying to capture himself because he doesn't realize that his other uh, side personality is the one that's doing everything. So mm-hmm. you have Edward Enigma checking down Dark Enigma and not realizing he's after himself. Then when he goes to catch himself, it brings the two personalities. Yeah, that would yeah, be good. That would be really creepy, actually. <laughs> like this wasn't creepy. Cause, yeah, well, because you know how affronted he would be that someone would kill his Miss Pringle, you know. Oh yeah, but how creepy was that when he was like asking her, uh, asking Lee, he was like for relationship advice while he knew she was already dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Maybe it's for uh... the next time, you know. <laughs> if anyone's smart, there won't be a next time. Well, we're not saying anyone's smart in Gotham. Oh no. I mean, the Keystone Cops, you know, with Butch's hand. Look at that, you know? Nobody's smart in Gotham. <laughs> I know. We, we said technology isn't that far advanced. They couldn't tell that was a fake hand. <laughs> Maybe they need to go but to Wayne State. I don't meditation. know. But, yeah, but just Jim and Harvey shooting off those big machine guns. I was like, oh, Jim Gordon's getting a, a big white skull on his chest next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Oh, well, they're here. Imagine that. Let's use them. <laughs> That was the longest 60 seconds, I swear. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. And we finally, I mean, not for long, but we finally got a small return of uh, Harvey Dent. Yes. They haven't even made Isn't a dent in that character yet. Oh! <laughs> you notice how every time they cast Harvey, like he was in the shadows, like one side of his face was always shadowed? Yep. Yeah, yeah, they've been doing that since the uh, last season. They just oh. keep carrying it over. Like, Are you saying it was... Wait, shadowing or foreshadowing? <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Dent's the shadow? What? Wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong, wrong. The shadow knows. <laughs> and for those who don't know what we're talking about, The Shadow was a radio drama from the 40s that was made into a really bad yes. movie with Alec Baldwin. Yes. Yes, Kelly, you're too young. You might not remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, best 10 years of a woman's life is between 29 and 30, so. <laughs> but I just... Yeah. I want to see more of Bruce's training. Like, that's really what I'm... I'm like, let's see... Like, something needs to change. Like, the, like we need to... Like, Bruce needs to disappear for a while. Cat needs to disappear for a while. Uh, we need to have something, like... 
needs to show some time change. But like, we're just getting too many characters that we don't feel like we're really focusing on much other than Gallivant. Like, that's pretty much who we see the most in this show right now is Gallivant. Mm-hmm. I love I love Selena's line to uh, Alfred though. She was like, "That is nice." She like it, it kind of like a slap in the face, isn't it, Alfred? Yes. <laughs> that was. What is it about awkward uh, DC comics and awkward dinner scenes? It's a trope. It works. <laughs> and and where's Barbara been? Well, we're we're getting her next week. They were she was in the she's in the scenes for next week. Oh yeah, she's gonna I do that. It she's cut off that. the preview, so I didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. Previews for next week. She's gonna be in it. There's even a scene with her in a wedding dress. She's so. gonna do that thing that Uh-oh. I said she should do to Jim. Oh yeah, didn't she kiss him or yep. something? She's gonna take advantage of Jim. Poor man. I wouldn't be. So yeah, something's happening with her next week. She either I bet you they either lock her up or she gets killed or something. She is pretty messed up. If she's wearing a wedding dress, no pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in the longest prediction in history, she's going to get cobble pot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She will be. She, you know, she's going to have to die of die heroic death so that Jim names his, his, he and Lee's child after her or something crazy. So. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know how she redeems herself because she looked pretty crazy next week too. Well, we know she's pretty crazy. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't look like she's going to redeem herself. Yeah. Anytime soon. Yeah, it's going to take quite a quite a heroic act to do that. Mm. I mean, you can only murder your parents and and kill half the GCPD, you know. One. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It takes a little bit to come back from that. <laughs> But you know what was a funny part of this episode? Uh, the 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 attack at the end on Galavan, just the army of penguins. Yes. <laughs> was, was awesome. They were all limping up the street. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the best part, because they had to. Otherwise, oh, yeah. otherwise you'd pick them out in a heartbeat. I just wonder where they found long that many suits. But how long, <laughs> how long did it take them all to practice to get that specific limp? Because it's a very specific limp. Yeah, I know, unless he told them all, here, put a rock in your one shoe and it reminds you to live. Yeah, that's a leg drag. That's like, like my, my dad kind of gets that way when he's tired because he had a stroke. It is a very interesting way of walking. you, you got to wonder, though, with as much as he's on the show, if he's not getting almost like an injury from doing that for that month, that long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He doesn't okay. like the, the pain of that limp either. Exactly. I was going to say solo. It's all right. It's fake. He just wants his uh, bottle. Keeping mm. the boy happy. I want to know where they yeah. got that many pairs of shoes that big. That's what I'm saying. Like, have you ever noticed? They're like so pointy and they're crazy big shoes. The majority would have been the hardest part about all that would have get everybody's hair looking the same and everybody on the same page and penguin finding all the like the suits and the shoes. How funny then would that scene have been if they just like had a scene of them all getting ready, all doing their hair up the same <laughs> way and putting the shoes on. Does this look right? Does this look right? Like a yeah. dance troop or something. Yeah, there you go. A dance troop of goons. <laughs> Oh, that's nuts. <laughs> then they could have broken on into Thriller after that. Uh, <laughs> the penguin. There you go. There you go. <laughs> do the penguin. Do the penguin. Uh, everybody you know, do the everybody do the penguin. Do how the penguin. funny would it be how funny would it be though if that did become a dance craze in Gotham? <laughs> the, the penguin. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I, I just love how everyone's been doing a 180 because like every news report on TV and like even the cops, everyone's calling him Penguin now. He doesn't have a real name anymore. That's better. <laughs> I know. I like how he, <laughs> but the, he's like, but they didn't even they didn't even say like Oswald Cobblepot, better known as the Penguin. They were just like, yes, the man known as Penguin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they forget his name real quick. 
They remember the persona. They're like Oswald Cobblepoot. <laughs> oh, the poor his poor mother. She got cobbled. <laughs> she got killed. She got butched. Now you gotta wonder if that's gonna that event. I mean, Penguin was already on the edge. You know, this is this is set him further over that edge. Oh yeah, he was chopping guys' hands hands off before. Except to to do something. Yeah, they're both nuttier than loons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't wait. For, I can't wait for Daddy to show up. Oh yeah. That, Daddy no, show up. Yeah. It's a be funeral. Com- be completely different. Like he'll be like completely straight. Everyone will be like, "Why are you so normal?" And he'll be like, "Normal? Mm. I'm not normal." He'll show up at the red triangle game. Oh, I figured he's Mama's funeral because yeah. you know Pat's gonna throw him a he her a huge funeral. Oh yeah. I mean that could be really interesting. Dad, you're here. I know you are, but when am I? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> here, son. Come sit in my cherry. Oh. <laughs> here, meet my fr- meet, here meet my here meet my friend Cowboy Curtis. He looks a lot ah! like Perry. He looks a lot like Perry White. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be say. Oh, that'd be a great DC Easter egg. Yeah. There you go. You know, just just like mentioning the uh, Titanic soundtrack about Vic, you know in the same episode as Victor Garber. Exactly. Yes. Solomon likes his cobble pot. But they yeah, should just follow. <laughs> Good. No, I was gonna say they should just follow other DC uh, shows examples and just put Constantine in an episode. Yeah, <laughs> that would be funny. I, my John Constantine. <laughs> he's a friend of Alfred's. Well, he's an old friend of Alfred's. There we go. English, English. Constantine just is hopping around the multiverse. Is what it is. Uh, he, well, you know, he would be the perfect person to teach Bruce theatrics. <laughs> Yeah, he could resurrect fish. <laughs> if anybody's getting resurrected, they should bring back, they'll resurrect the Waynes. Oh. Too long Lazarus, but sorry, they'd come back really crazy. <laughs> Technically, they might have been dead less than Sarah did, was. We don't know the timeline, but, you know, just saying. Any final oh, thoughts on this week's episode? Hmm. I can't wait to see what Crazy Barber does. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exciting. Crazy Barber is exciting. And I think it's going to be fun too to see. I'm I'm hoping that we will get we will get more training from Bruce quickly. Um, maybe Alfred will forget the car again, or you know, fencing or something. We we need some of that because yes, he do. can't go from kid to. Superhero. There's, there's got to be in between. We've got to see that. Yeah, I agree. That's why Alfred needs to go out in a mask for a while. That would be pretty cool. Doctor Vigilante. I <laughs> mm-hmm. So is that it on this episode, then? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do we have any? Do we have any other Batman news? Yes. There's always Batman news. Mm-hmm. Phil and I created our countdown to Batman v Superman. We are ready. Woo-hoo. We have five months to go. I was going to say, let me turn on my phone. I can give you the exact countdown down to the second. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I but did love... you see? Did you see they're talking about the solo Ben Affleck Batman movies? They're talking about the Red Hood's going to be a big part of them. Yeah, they're going to. They're the idea was the solo Bat film is going to combine uh, the death in the family and under the Red Hood type story, which I think could be really cool because like I was telling you, Phil, like I heard somewhere and I don't remember who was saying it, but like the Red Hood has kind of like become DC's winter soldier. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, they're really playing up the Red Hood and I'm like, that's cool. But I really want to see like, I think if they made a Robin centric solo Batman film, kind of where it's like you have this one arc of, Dick is now Nightwing. You know, you have like Nightwing already established. And then you get 
the idea that this one Robin has come back alive and the Red Hood kind of angle. And then during that time, you're getting the new Robin, be it if they bring in Damien or if they bring in Tim, which, you know, I'm not sure who they would actually do. I mean, part of me thinks they would go to Damien because he's like the current Robin and he's popular and they're trying to grab young audience at the same time. And we already have this established Batman. But I think that'd be kind of cool because then you could come out of it having Batman have Robin, but also have his other sidekick characters and spinoff characters and make it more about Bruce. Almost like, you know how Tim Drake always said that Batman needed a Robin? Mm -hmm. And we kind of get the sense with BVS that there is no Robin. It's just been Batman. So if he, through this time, this turmoil, he comes out with another Robin to help bring him back to being more of a balanced crime fighter in person and out of like the dark shell that Batman had kind of uh, put himself into before the events of BBS, I think would be a cool, but, but I um, think, yeah, well, I think they're going to get there because they think, I believe they said, well, they, they're, they're going to go with Red Hood and I think they said Nightwing's going to be in the solo movies. So, and, Very cool. you know, just thinking up that, un- that bat universe, because, you know, having an already established Batman is great because we can just jump into things and kind of tell it backwards and not have to do some of the origins of every Bat character. Uh, what I think was neat was the talk. And it makes sense that I think, you know, the scene in the trailer where Batman's standing there and he's in the armor and Superman like drops down. Mm-hmm. I think that might be like the one shot of Ben Affleck actually wearing armor <laughs> and the rest of it's yeah. all CG. Yeah, I think they said which makes sense. There. So, which makes sense, like cause they made the prop replica of the armor. You know, mm. But I, I wonder if he actually ever wore any of it at all. Was mm. all it was always CG. Well, there's CG in the cape even too. Well, yeah, that was a good after mask deal. But you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if you look at that one shot of him standing there, it looks more like real armor. And then some of the shots I can see the CG, and it makes sense to do the armor and CG just for motion and everything. But I want to see the behind the scenes. I want to see Affleck and Cavill fighting and Affleck just in the motion caster suit. That's what I want to see. Okay, here's your, here's your countdown. The Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Four months, two weeks, three days, 14 hours, 27 minutes, and 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. We'll check back in with Phil in a little while here. <laughs> now here's something I was thinking about yesterday, Phil. This thing about mm. Suicide Squad. Now, we know yes. that the Joker is going to appear in some flashbacks. But do you think the Joker will take place anytime during the main timeline of Suicide Squad? Or, is he will, or will he just be a flashback character? Um, He might come in present day because you have Harley in there. Now, my other thought is, you know, like with the Marvels, like you hear about people getting signed on for all these other movies and stuff. There's been no talk of a Suicide Squad sequel or Joker or Harley appearing in any other of the DC films. Unless they're seeing how Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad do, maybe, box office-wise? That's what I'm wondering, because you would think, with those properties, those characters, you would want to get them to be in another yeah, film. And I wonder... What I would like to see in the Batman solo film is something, since Jeff Johns is working on it, something like in the vein of, uh, like, Hush... Or long Halloween ish, kind of where you know how in Hush, Batman encounters like every one of his main villains, even if it's just a small part, but yeah. something, something where there's other villains working together and, or they're just mentioned, or, you know, something that makes the universe feel thick to where we get to see other villains. Right. You want it fleshed out. Even a scene of Arkham Asylum, maybe, where a bunch of them are locked up right now. Mm-hmm. Just, I don't know, because like, I would like to see more of the Joker and Harley, and who knows who else would be cool to see. Um, but if there's no other film with them in mind yet, that's all I'm saying. It's not been touched on whether or not they'll come back for any other movies or not. Because what other movies would they be in other than like a Batman solo film? Mm-hmm. Or a Suicide Squad 2. So. Yeah, I think they're waiting to see what the. I'm sure Batman vs. Superman will do good, you know, money-wise, but they'll probably wait and see what Suicide Squad does. I think it'll and do they good. And probably, they probably have an option in there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, they probably do. 
Well, it's just like how they sign, you know, they're like, all right, Chris Evans, you're in a nine picture deal. You're just signing up for cap one, but we're going to sign you for nine pictures. You know, it's like Marvel's so forward thinking about all this and DC's just kind of like, eh, we'll give it a shot. Yeah, but I think think it's more like back in the day, like Robert Downey Jr. did Iron Man 1 and I don't think he made that much for Iron Man 1. Oh, he did it. But once that hit, they were like, oh, let's come back to the table and talk. Right. Well, and they knew after the success of Iron Man that Captain America would do very well. You know, oh, yeah. they, they kind of had that, that success already. So they knew. So I, I'm exci- I'm actually really excited for Suicide Squad just because it is such a gamble of a movie and something different with pretty much, you know, other than Joker... All the other characters are first time on the big screen. Oh, yeah. You could argue Amanda Waller, but we won't go in there. (laughs) Don't don't mention Green Lantern. Green what? Green Lantern. Green who? What? Uh. (laughs) Be nice. That's one of Ellie's favorites. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellie, that you have... We won't hold that against you. Yeah, we won't won't hold that against you. There was a really good (laughs) kilowog in it. I'll give you that. Oh, Ryan Reynolds is just dreamy. <laughs> like I said, there was a good Kilowog in it and a really good Sinestro, so I'll, I'll give you that. But I know that this, was it next week, Phil, we get Batman 45 drops? Uh, I didn't look yet, but pro- I, 46 I, probably, I think. Is it 46? Hold on, I wrote it down because I was checking. Yeah, yeah so I think 46 this month is all the 46s, out, yeah. Yeah, 46 comes out on... The 11th. And have you, I know that you could probably hear Phil talk about this over on World's Finest, um, DC's, our comic review podcast here, but I'm really digging the Batman and Robin Eternal. Yeah, it's, it's good. Um, and, uh, coming up pretty soon here, well, by the time this drops, maybe it'll be out, but, uh, Lilith and I, uh, interviewed Tim Seeley, who, uh, is the co-writer on the Grayson comic right now, and he, he, he does some work on Batman and Robin Eternal, so we talk about that a little too. That's awesome. I just, I really want Very Batman cool. and Robin Eternal to be a smaller series than what Batman Eternal was, because I feel like mm-hmm. you can read the first 10 issues of Batman Eternal. Yeah. Solomon agrees yes, so with me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He is getting He's having a solo. Oh. But I feel like they lost like sight of what the story was and just the I don't know, it just got too convoluted and just and everything. Well, like I said, it's hard with a weekly series that you have to like, you know, watch the pacing week to week. I would think you'd have to plot so that so far in advance it would be difficult. Oh yeah. Exa- Plus, exactly. With, with the different characters, like you know, you can if you bring Catwoman in and I'll tell you, um, I just picked up this week. I just bought The Batman. I don't know if, like, I think it's one of the animated series that gets lost in anybody's discussion of Batman. But I picked up season four because that's where Robin gets introduced, and I really like the way they did it. So I just recommend if anyone's looking for something Batman that they haven't, try that series. Like, season three is great because that's when Barbara comes in as Batgirl. Mm-hmm. You know, the, but it did five seasons, and I feel like it just didn't. It doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. Like, everyone talks about the original Batman animated series, which they should, but then they talk about Brave and the Bold, and uh, they forget about the Batman, because for some kids, that was their cartoon. That was their intro to Batman. Yeah, I've only seen a few episodes of that. I want to wa- I want to see the, like, the whole series of that. It's worth it, man. Like I said, jump in. Um, jump in with it. And check out season three and four. That's where it really gets three, four, and five is where it really gets the best. Huh. But and also, have you heard anything, Phil, about any more of the Batman Unlimited films? Like they did the two real fast, but I haven't heard anything else about like a third one or anything else. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. So I'm just kind of curious if they were like, "All right, we're going to do these two real fast, and then uh, that'll be it." Well, I wonder how they sold because they they were geared more towards kids. So I was like, I wonder, I wonder if they sold or not. If they didn't sell that much, they might not do anymore. Yeah, they're very. I mean, they're very kid friendly. I mean, for me, I've watched them. I'm not as they don't hold my attention as well because you know they are more just straight up, you know, kid films. Mm-hmm. And that's good because we need that. We get these DC animated films that aren't kid friendly, that are geared towards adults. We need something that brings it back. To, for kids, like, 
I actually enjoyed the I have I bought last year on Black Friday for a dollar ninety six the Justice League Trapped in Time movie. Mm-hmm. So I bought it just to have. So as hmm. Solomon gets a little older, he can watch that too and have you know good cartoons for him as well. Batman. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. Say it. Say Batman. <laughs> say it right here on the podcast, son. Say Batman. Hmm? Your mom but is I... freaking. Uh, what was Solomon's first <laughs> word after mama? Batman. <laughs> For the whole world to hear. He said okay, Batman. We gotta teach Bat Dad, too. Gotta teach mm. him Bat Dad. Oh, no. He already. Okay, you want to talk about Dad? He already looks at the Superman symbol and thinks of Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, because I have it tattooed on my chest and stuff, and he sees it. And then, mm-hmm. like, when he sees it other places, he's always, like, pointing at it. He knows. He's like, he sees that symbol. He knows. Daddy. <laughs> I'm training my child well. I'm conditioning yeah, my child. So have, you, have you made the spacecraft yet and taken pictures of him to hide in the attic? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we did go as, uh, we were going to originally for Halloween going to dress him up as baby Kal-El coming to Earth and Janine and I were going to be Jarrell and Laura. But we, uh-huh. but we threw a Halloween party. And we picked Batman theme. So Solomon and I went as Batman and Robin. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. But you, you totally need to, like, build a fake spacecraft, put him in it, take the pictures, and hide him in the attic for him to find later. <laughs> Son, I have totally something to tell you. Son, I have something to tell you that's going to scar you for life. Yes. He's like, yeah, Paul. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me dad, you call me pa. Pa. <laughs> Alright, is, is that it? I think that's all the bad news. I mean, we got the new comics coming out. I mean, there's BBS stuff slipping right now. I mean, they just released the, the Total Film Magazine and then the, was it Empire Magazine did the, the Suicide Squad. So that's filtering out right now. The the solo Batman <laughs> film news is coming out. We, uh, there hasn't been anything new on the animated front. We know Batman Bad Blood's coming, what, January? Something like that. I, yeah, and I can't wait for Killing Joke, too. Yeah, which Batman Bad Blood should have some sort of trailer, preview, some sort of, you know, intro for Killing Joke. Yeah, Killing Joke, uh, DC's first rated R uh, animated. There hasn't been anything, nothing new on the video games, other than I did see that Warner Brothers is refunding everyone's money who bought Arkham Knight for PC. Oh yeah, because so I guess I think they're putting out the new version of that for PC soon. So, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's November. You know, hopefully with December coming around, we'll have some Batman news, but maybe some uh, oh, new Batman. Have you guys played? Have any of you guys played Lego Dimensions yet? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Not yet. I have. I have not yet either. I'm dying to play it. So listen to the doctor tell Batman shut up. <laughs> oh, we did. not uh, Speaking of Lego, they did announce that uh, was it Ray Fiennes as Alfred for the Lego Batman? Yeah, and Rosario Dawson's Batgirl for the Lego Batman movie. So mm-hmm. we did get that news. Very cool. And they did cast Mister Freeze to come to Gotham and Hugo Strange. Yes, BB Wong is Hugo Strange. It's gonna be different, but you know what? I'll roll with it. Well, I think I saw pictures online. They were like putting like different, uh, you know, like the the makeup department. They're putting like different beards and stuff on them and yeah. try it out. You'll be like, "Hey, where's BD Wong? That's him." What? He's wearing too mm-hmm. much makeup. I don't even know it's him. Exactly. Isn't that the guy who created the Indominus? The, is the Indominus coming to Gotham? Is that the guy from SVU? That's that's what Batman has to. That's uh, Alfred has to fight. Alfred has to wrangle a dinosaur and ride that dinosaur through Gotham. Uh. <laughs> that is that is the Jim Gordon has to fight the Indominus Rex. That is what I want to see in Gotham. Okay, let's let's end it on that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see Jim Gordon fight the Indominus Rex, please tweet to us at Before the Bat Pod, and we'll see what we can do for you. <laughs> That's right. Or email us before the bat at gmail dot com. Or get us on Facebook before the bat, the Gotham podcast. Because, because we're, we're because we decided we're uh 
This is going to be your one-stop shop for Batman news. We're going to do Gotham, and then we're going to do any and every other Batman news. Yeah, we figure we, there's a lot of news that's been out there, but it's been older. So we're going to try to, instead of talking so much back Batman news, we're going to try to stay current and discuss what's been said and what's coming out with current Batman projects and not so much. Oh, one thing we didn't mention, Phil. Uh, yeah. Bob Kane got his walk of his star on the hallway, uh, the Walk of Fame in California. Yeah. So. Oh, Yay! that's the other thing. Uh, yeah, but uh, in sad news, did you see it? It was like two days ago or something. George Barris died. Yes, and for those who don't know, George Barris designed the classic 1966 Batman Batmobile. So that, we lost a member of the Bat family. That's right. Sad. Solomon doesn't know what it is, but he's crying. <laughs> All right. Let me just buzz through. I got a couple announcements. Well, uh, I don't know if you saw the schedule went up yesterday, I guess, when uh, Rob's going to put the shows up. Cool. So hope, so hopefully if all goes well, you should be able to get before the bat every Tuesday. So join us every Tuesday. <laughs> Solo's excited. He is. And... And I've been saying this just about everywhere. Um, if you have any any ideas for any good uh, Marvel vs. DC battles, send them to me. Uh, you can email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. Um, or on Twitter, I'm at nightwingpdp because we're going to be doing a special Marvel vs. DC podcast where uh, my Marvel co-host Charlie is going to debate uh, a little of hellfire on the DC side about battles and, you know, whose cinematic universe is better and just anything goes. That would be... Oh, you know holy what? cow. You know what, Phil? That's yeah. an epic battle. With an idea like oh, yes. this, if we came up, it would be really cool if like, you came up with a bracket or something of characters. Mm -hmm. And then people, like different people from Southgate, each got one of the characters to argue. Like, Yeah, like, well, 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 that's the thing. We're going to start with this. We're, it's just going to be me, Charlie, and Lilith to start with. And then if it all goes well, we're, we're, we're saying there's so much. We're probably going to do like a, at least a mini series of this. So we're saying maybe, you know, that going on, we'll add more people. What? The Fantasy Superhero League. Exactly. That's what I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm just gonna vote Spawn every time. Spawn. <laughs> Spawn. Let me let me see. No, uh, Dick Grayson every time. I was make, I was more making the joke because he's not DC or Marvel. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if I can corral Charlie and Lilith, and then <laughs> if if I can handle those two, we'll add more people. <laughs> It'll be an epic battle. Oh, yes. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I gave all our info. Do you guys want to give your social media? Uh, yeah, you can find me at JTY Patrick. You can also hear me on Southgate's The Krypton Report, the Supergirl podcast, all things Kryptonian. We will be touching on the everything Kryptonian related. So you'll hear some more Superman discussion over there. Woohoo! You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and about everywhere else that matters. At Super Squint, that's S U P E R S Q U I N T, and you can hear me also on um, Flashpoint and Queen Consolidated with the lovely Miss Lois Elfire. whose name keeps coming up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Uh, join us again next week, everyone. And all right, I want everyone to join in. Same bad time, same bad channel for God's own podcast. Ugh. Same bad time, same bad channel. Same bad time, same bad channel. Same bad time, same bad channel. The God's Come on, Ellie, podcast. give us one. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, All right. one, I gotta okay. go. I gotta, I gotta right, go. Everyone. The signal's shining in the sky. Solomon and I are needed. Uh -oh. Go, Robin. All right. <laughs> Have a good day. Kelly and Ellie, be careful. Will do. See you guys later. See ya. Same bad time, same bad channel. The Gotham Park.